What's going on guys? Welcome to a Florida live stream. Canal fishing. First things first, can everybody hear me? If so, please comment down below. You see where we're at here in beautiful Florida. I'm uh, in the Keys right now on a place called, uh, I don't know if I'm on Isla Mirada or Tavernier. Not really sure. I think I'm on Tavernier though. Um, can everybody hear me? Is the audio good? Can everybody hear? Before I start, I want to make sure that uh, the audio is good. What's up, King Brian Fisher Dixon? Oops, Apple Colt said the audio is good. And there's an angry dog over there that just showed up. As long as he can't jump the fence, unless the, this live stream might get real interesting if he jumps the fence. He's acting angry. Anyway, out here today fishing this beautiful Florida canal. And uh, first things first, folks, what I've done is I've kind of chummed the area. If you guys saw my YouTube story this morning, I uh, have a chum bag out, but then I also have some, see, today's going to be a double header. I'm going to do this live stream and then publish a video. And from that video, we actually, uh, we caught this little Jack Creval. So what I'm going to do is just throw this out there as some chum that will sink to the bottom and uh, attract fish. I'm really hoping for a shark today. And then I also have this fish here that we filleted, save the carcass. Like I said, you guys will see the video in just a couple hours. Throw that out there as well. I've already seen some snapper gathering. This might be really good. And then finally, look at this. <laughs> look at that. A big filleted sheep's head. Let's throw this out there. Ugh. Let that sink to the bottom. I'm hoping that it's going to draw on some sharks or something like that. The last place I stayed at, there were a bunch of sharks and stingrays that would come in every time the fishing boats would come in because the guys would fillet their fish, they'd throw all the carcasses, and they'd throw carcasses of stuff like tuna and mahi and a kingfish and stuff like that. So, I mean, there was a lot of meat in the water and sharks would come around, stingrays would come around. So I'm kind of trying to do the same thing out here, only I'm just in this canal. So, all right, there's our chum is out and hopefully over the next hour or so, hour and a half, however long I decide to do this, um, Hopefully that'll draw in some good fish and some sharks and stuff. Then for bait, check out what we got for bait here. In fact, let me show you guys first location and then um, check it out. And a canal, just tons of boats, just houses lined up along here, tons of boats. And the open ocean's out that way, so people leave and then they go um, fishing for the day. So that's what we're at. We're just kind of in the, in the canal where people travel to get out to go deep sea fishing. All right, let me move you guys over. First thing I'm gonna do is rotate down. Check out the bait. Look at the bait, got cut ballyhoo here. This is like the bait that everybody in Florida uses. This is frozen, but you can catch these very easily out there. I think it's a funny name for them, ballyhoo. I'm gonna cut this bag open. Just got a brand new bag this morning. And uh, there you go. Check out these funky things. They have, they look like needlefish. They probably are, probably part of the needlefish family. Hmm. Let's dislodge one here. Come on. There we go. You guys see that there. And then what you do, these fish are really oily, fantastic bait. In fact, look at the little lip on them. Part of the needlefish, you can really spear other little fish with it, I guess. And uh, we're just gonna cut some chunks off of it. I have two rods I'm gonna rig up. One's kind of a, uh, you know what I'm gonna do? Actually, I forgot, I forgot what I was gonna, I had a different plan, but I'm used to doing this. I'm actually gonna do something else. Let me cut this up here. Get some nice cut bait going. I think I'm gonna use, these are bigger ballyhoo than I've ever seen. We're gonna use a little piece of chunk bait like that for the smaller rod. Put these back in the cooler so they don't spoil. All right, getting all set up. If you just joined us, we just chummed the water. So hopefully we get some sharks and stingrays coming in. Now, put it back up here. What's up guys? You can see, it's hard for me to see the comments from far away. Hey Josh. And from Ohio and Michigan, a lot of people from up north watching. Chicago, Finland. Wow, Finland. Isn't that crazy that we can do this stuff like this where people from all over the world can watch? 
Hey, Jose. Liberty Wolf. Oh, from Idaho. There you go. Got all kinds of people from Singapore. All right. First rod we're going to put out. Oh, my bait's in the shade. I'll bring it. be right back. Don't go anywhere. I've got here some live fish called a... I forgot what it was called. Placard? Pal palchard? Something like that. What is this fish called? I forgot. A little silver fish there. A live... Whoa, hey, I almost made an escape. Got him. Got an angry dog looking at me over there on the other side of the fence. And uh, hopefully he doesn't kick up a fuss. I'm just gonna rig... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Boy, these are slick. There. All right. So I'm gonna rig up a live fish first. He has a big nose. So I'm gonna rig him through the nose just like that. Throw this out there first. Kind of throw it right near the chum, you know? Because the chum is gonna bring a fish in looking because they can smell it. And then, but then they'll see this morsel, hopefully and they'll bite it. There we go. How are you doing, sir? Good. Can I ask you a favor? All righty. Can you move your boat up a couple of feet? Yes, sir. And the reason for that is when I put my... What? Oh, no, I was looking at it. It's on my phone there. I have somebody, people oh, watching. Sorry, no, no, you're talking? fine. Uh-huh, you're fine. Uh, yeah, just move it up because when I put my boat in the water, my engines are going to hang where yours are. And that's kind of an agreement we have uh-huh i was just doing it there for just like an hour while i do while i show people this or do you need it right now no i don't need it right now I, I probably in like one hour i'll move it right back to this right spot two hours now, there's no problem with this it's just sometimes i run out of room and part of the deal was he could use my my dock put his posts up and mine to do this i will get it out of the way like in less than an hour <laughs> Okay. Your fish. Uh, all right, sounds good. A little chum and some shrimp. Okay, a little chum. I have the chum down <laughs> there. Uh, I, they, they were out of shrimp this morning at all the tackle stores. Always out of shrimp. Uh, <laughs> especially on a gorgeous day like this. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't know. Right. I know that. All right, thank you. So, what was your name? Mike. Mike. All right, Mr. Mike. Thank you. All right. So we got fish out. All right, so we'll keep an eye on that. And then for, oh, we got a super chat. I gotta look at the super chat. The camera's kind of far away, but I have to do that. Let's see, who's that? Thank you, good luck from somebody. Oh, my finger's wet, so it's not working on the phone. Sorry, guys. There was a super chat from somebody. Thank you so much. All right, so we've got a live minnow down there. The chum is doing its thing. And then for this one, it's got a small hook. We're going to put a piece of the ballyhoo, cut ballyhoo on there. And uh, there we go. Let's do it. Let's see what, if the chum has brought in anything. All right. This is fun. A little live stream action. A small hook with it. It's on a jig head. That's everybody does here in Florida. I see another super chat in there. You know, guys, it's really bright out here. Save your super chats till a little bit later when I can kind of do a QA. and a because right now I got to focus on fishing and it's so bright. I can't really see my screen that well. So please save the super chats for later and I'll reply to them. But um, right now I got to focus on the fishing. You guys see where we're at. Right here. Beautiful day here in southern florida i know it's cold a lot of places hopefully it gets a little warmer for you guys so all right two pieces of bait out oh i see some parrot fish i see parrot fish down here a school of them it's kind of you guys won't be able to see it it's kind of dark down there but i can just barely make them out and i see a few snappers swimming around too hmm Mm-hmm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm 
I'm just gonna leave that sit right there. See, I wish I had live shrimp, but all the tackle stores were out. I'm gonna look at some of these super chats while we're waiting for a bite. We've got $5 from Larissa Brooks. Thank you so much. And from Taylor Diesel. Oh, from Rocket Slug, have you ever fished for paddlefish? I have not fished for paddlefish before. Um, I hear that's a fun thing. There are places in the south where they do that all the time. So, might, uh, I could get into that. Paddlefish are such a cool, unique fish. All right, here we go. I see a snapper swimming around down here. We just put the chum out, so it may take a couple minutes for the chum to do its work, folks. I do see some fish cruising around, though. And I put out some chum this morning, like a chum block, so... All right. I'm gonna re-rig this. I'm actually gonna try to, like, bury the hook. This piece of cut bait. There we go. Just like that. Just like that. You guys, can you guys see that raw tip there? You can see the can you see this one? I think so. Well set up here. The other day when we were out, we saw a nurse shark swimming around in the in the canal and some stingrays. So <coughs> that'd be really cool to catch either one of those. So what I did, guys, I actually came down to Florida in January, rented a boat to film a bunch of videos, filmed a bunch of videos with the boat, and then I had to, um, but it was hard because I didn't make that many videos in the time period that I had because I had to figure out the fishing, and I'm just not very used to Florida fishing. so. It took a long time to start to figure stuff out. We caught lots of small ones, but nothing really that good. And then um, uh, I started to figure out basically toward the end of the trip, like a lot of the tricks and stuff that the people use down here. And by that time it was time to leave. And I was like, well, this stinks. I just figured out the fishing right when I'm gonna leave. So I, while I was still on the trip, during the last couple of days of the trip, I actually, found another rental and came back down here um, to keep filming videos because and rented another boat and like basically started all over again so that I could film some better videos. So that's what's been going on the last few weeks. I went back to my house in the mountains, edited, got all kind of ready again and came back out here. So that's what's been going on. Actually, really surprised I haven't gotten a bite yet. But this is my first time canal fishing, and we just put the chum out there, so it may take a minute for the chum to get moving. Hmm. Hmm. I see some parrotfish down here. Let's see if they'll bite. There's actually, you know, parrotfish are kind of funny. I think they eat meat though. I'm pretty sure, yeah, they eat meat. What am I talking about? They're looking at it, <laughs> but they don't want to bite. There are lots of parrotfish swimming around in this uh, in this place. I noticed. 
Hmm. I am shocked that I haven't gotten a bite yet. The bait smells fine. I'm doing the right techniques, I think. I think. Yeah, I'm doing, instead of moving this, moving my uh, bait all around, I'm just gonna let it sit on the bottom and I'm gonna watch both rods. We're gonna do a little Q and A. So it may take a few minutes for things to kind of, you know, heat up, especially, especially now they just put the chum out. So we got another $5 super chat from somebody. For announcing my name, for pronouncing my name, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, um, Laris. <laughs> Laris, I'm a little worried that I'll now mispronounce it. Uh, hi from Israel. Well, we got Israel. Isn't that crazy that I can be sitting here in Florida doing a live stream um, and people from all over the world all at once can watch? That is truly remarkable to me. So, all right, we got both lines out. Now it's just a matter of waiting. We got a live fish on one, cut bait on the other. So it should just be a matter of time. From Italy, Italy again, Utah, Florida, Spokane, Washington, New Jersey, Tennessee, Halifax. Wow, we got people from Canada, Denmark. Use a strip of ballyhoo instead of a chunk. Will that really make that big of a difference? Egypt, here, let me read a few more of this. I might switch my techniques. I'm surprised I haven't gotten any bites on that ballyhoo. UK, Kentucky, Indiana, Kansas, Idaho, Alabama, Sweden, and Florida. I think basically got all 50 states in here, am I right? Ohio, Minnesota, North Carolina, Indiana, Minnesota, Austin, Texas, Australia, Toronto, Maryland, Hawaii, Missouri, North Carolina, Massachusetts. We've got every, I'm pretty sure all 50 states and a bunch of countries besides. Somebody just said though, they gave an interesting tip. I don't know who it was, it went by so fast, that they said, use a strip of ballyhoo instead of a chunk. Maybe that's what my problem is. I'm willing to try anything because I am shocked that a little piece of cup bait hasn't gotten bit yet. I am really shocked. Take the chunk off. Cut strip. Hey, Pops. My dad's walking around. Getting stuff done. All right, let's try it. A little strip there. I think that should do it. Is that rigged right? Can somebody from Florida tell me? All I have is like a little jig head on there and <laughs> a strip of ballyhoo. I think that should be right. Hmm. Wash off me hands. Let's see if this does anything different. I'll try casting over there to mix it up. There we go. All right, guys. Beautiful day, but just I'm surprised that the I haven't gotten a bite yet. Really, I'm, I'm really surprised. Wait, getting a bite. Now I'm getting a bite. Getting a bite. Come on, eat it. That was amazing. I switched from a chunk of ballyhoo to a little strip and got bit on the first cast. Oh, he had it in his mouth. I don't know how long he... Might be a small one, but I'll take anything at this point. We'll see. Did he steal it? Well, he mangled it. I'm just going to throw it right back down there. Well, that was fast. That is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Really amazing. From a chunk to a strip and got bit that quickly. Wow. You know, catfish and things like that, they aren't that picky. Oops. 
They aren't that picky. But apparently here in the salt water, that matters a lot. We've got a school of minnows coming by. That's a good sign. They're just swimming through the water, just cruising. And that tells me that they can kind of smell the stuff on the water and they're coming around. And see, the tide is actually flowing out that way, which is where we saw, which saw the shark. So hopefully the um, smell from all the dead fish down there is flowing that way. And we'll pull in, we'll draw in some interesting creatures. I probably should have, in reality, put out the chum like, 30 minutes before I started the live stream to get the scent going, but I don't know, I kind of wanted to show it uh, down there. Look at that live fish, live kicking fish. He still hasn't gotten a bite yet. That tells me that there just aren't fish here at the moment because I like, I think that if they were down there, they would have eaten that already. So they just need to come around. If I jigged this, you know, what if I jigged the piece of bait? Yeah, you know, next time I do a live stream, I'm gonna chum the area really, really well, like 30 minutes before it even starts. So there's not this like waiting period for creatures to come around. So we hit bottom with a strip. Now I'm going to jig it. Got a live fish. This is what we got for live fish. You can see them all in there. Bunch of lively fellas. I started with the smallest one. And then we got Ballyhoo in case you're just joining us. That's the setup for the day. There we go. I wonder if I should chum more. Nah. Hmm. I really am shocked. I see, I've seen some snapper and stuff cruising, but they aren't biting. Very strange, very curious. One thing about Florida fishing though, you never know when it could, uh, when it could happen. I see a parrotfish swimming by, see? My bait right in front of him. Oh my. Look how big oh, yeah, those are. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. See if they'll eat this. Some are, I don't think are parrotfish either, are they? No, I don't know what those are. Just ignoring you. Oh, yeah, that one's a snapper. You see him eat it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I wish we oh, could show Oh, he spit it out. Wish we oh, could look at show the stingray. Oh, guys, 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 guys. Guys, you see him? Look at the stingray. <laughs> just, just cruising. Just cruising. What the heck? What the heck? He was just on the surface. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? 
was so funny. There was a, st like a stingray, like an inch under the surface. Okay, that's a good sign. We got stuff coming around. We got stuff coming around. This is good. You gonna fish? Yeah, you know, if you don't mind, I'm gonna put one of those little tiny hooks on. Oh, a little tiny hook? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. You guys, my dad hey, is. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, you know, all the hooks are. are oh, you know, I actually have all the hooks right here. I forgot. Okay. Yeah, I'll rewrite. All right, guys, my dad has joined me. We got a stingray swim around, so maybe something will start happening here. And we have some parrot fish hanging around. There are lots and lots of parrot fish in the canal, we've noticed, just everywhere. So um, they might be kind of savvy, you know? All right, let me sit you guys down. So we got, we got stuff. We got a first stingray scene of the day. Little guy, but that was cool. gonna happen it's gonna happen so next time I'll start chumming earlier to get things coming around there we go, there we go. okay let's find the littlest hooks you've got here <laughs> would you meant, would you recommend a drop shot hook or a regular hook? I would recommend a hook. just a J hook. Okay. Like, what do you mean a, a drop shot? Hook? Like, you know, the circle. I'm sorry, circle hook. Yeah. Circle. Oh yeah, sir. Like either one, a circle hook or, yeah. or a anything. Small J hook here. Guys, something very strange happened there. A parrotfish came over. He nibbled the ballyhoo and spit it out. So I'm going to try, oh look, oh guys, so we have a little school of tiny minnows. You guys wouldn't be able to see them, but a school with tiny minnows, a big, uh, they're, the minnows are small, but the school is big, and they just move through, so. Got a lot of activity. A lot there. of activity starting to heat up. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Okay, so I've just rigged up with a different type of cut bait there, a little strip. Let's see if that gets something. Last time we live streamed, you got a shark. I did. It was a good one too. <laughs> hmm. The parrotfish keep looking at my bait, but they're like, they turn away. I wonder why I'm not doing myself any favors by having it on a jig head. I'll find out. I'll put my little... Uh, Are little you just going to go weightless? Well, I could. I, I, it's not hooked right now weightless, but I could do that. <laughs> These parrotfish are so cautious. The guy goes up, he goes up, he nips the end of it and swims away. So I don't think we're going to catch any parrotfish unless... I don't know. I'm just going to keep casting. Parrotfish you can't keep to eat anyway. You you know, if you just had strictly a, a bear hook. See what happened? Or a hook with, uh, yeah, a tiny one with just covered in a piece of bait. Maybe they'll go for that. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm going to go for here. Answer a few questions while my dad's getting rigged up and while I'm waiting. All right. What are you guys' favorite videos, you know? Like, out of all of them, you like the Hawaii ones? You like Chum with Candy Cat Food? Um, interesting. Catching cook videos. Somebody said they love the lobster one. Spear fishing. You know, we haven't done a spear fishing one in a while. Somebody said a Hawaii catching cook. Three day challenges. That's a that's a hit. <laughs> one. That's a very popular one. 
three days eating only what I catch. You know, guys, when I run into subscribers out and about, I always ask them that question. And I get um, all the time people say they like the three-day challenges. So trout and crawfish, people really like that. All catching cooks. Dungeness crab, crawfish. I hear the crawfish a lot. I just got a bite, but it's just a small bite again. Come on. Come on. Eat it. I didn't know I'd have such a hard time catching stuff on cup bait. Did I, have I gone on a mission? I have not gone on any mission, like a missionary mission or anything like that. Creek, vi creek videos. I should do a one week catch and cook. That would be epic. Three day catch ones, crawdads, crabbing. MRE video. <laughs> My dad's MRE video. My dad started a channel recently. The Louisiana Catch and Cooks. That is a popular one as well. I'm getting little nibbles here, guys, now. I'm getting little nibbles, but they're, they, they do feel small. We got $5 from somebody. <laughs> My favorite is you and your brother having a cook-off and your pops judging it. We'll have to do more of those from uh, Colin, Sir Colin. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a nibble, little one nibbling at this right now. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Eat it. Eat it, little fellow. Pure fishing was fun to watch. Gator videos. I enjoyed that gator ones. Yeah, I've tried to go gator uh, hunting since then, but it never worked out. Let's check this big rod here. Tarpon, I should go tarpon fishing. Collapse, oh, oh no, my bait's still there. Wow. Wow, you know what? He's still alive and wiggling. He's still alive and wiggling and he hasn't gotten a single bite this whole time. I guess this whole live stream, how long, this live stream's been on for 32 minutes and he's, he's been out there for like 28 minutes. I'm surprised he's still alive. And he hasn't gotten a bite. Truly shocking to me. We have switched to a big piece of cup bait for some sharks. Thank you so much to Isaiah for the super chat. Appreciate that. All right, we're switching it. We're switching. Let me show you guys my setup here. You guys see that? We got some ballyhoo here. I'm gonna use some of these chunks to chum though. Chum the water just a little bit more. Cut a chunk off. Just like so. And uh, rig this on. Just like that. Hopefully a little mix up there will get something. I caught a shark in that last live stream, so I'm kind of spoiled, and that's kind of what I want from now on is shark in live stream. We saw a shark in this creek a couple days ago. There we go. All right. Chunk of cut, big chunk of cut bait out. There we go. Okay. Hopefully that turns our luck around. Thank you for the one dollar from somebody. EX33Z. Appreciate it. Arkansas series. Have you ever fished in New York City? That would be actually kind of cool. Do a New York City one. That'd actually be really cool. Gotten any bites, Pop? Not a thing. Not yet. Hmm. Guys, I ain't giving up because I put out all that chum out there. Maybe it takes longer than I thought. The fish are down there. 
You see them down there? Oh, golly, yeah. We're, I mean, we've got the parrotfish all over, and then I've got some of those uh, chub-looking fish down here. Or no. Yeah, yeah, some of those chub-looking fish. Looks like to me they might be small parrotfish, though, too. There's some good-looking fish down there. Hmm. There are some good-looking fish. You know what I'm going to do, guys? I wonder if... See, the water's very clear. And here I'm using this big, like, well, not big, but it's a small, but it's a solid, a chartreuse jig head. And I'm wondering if that's driving the fish away. If it's too bright, I'm going to switch to just a bare hook and see if that gets them. Because something's wrong. Something's off. I'm using small pieces of cut bait. And normally the fish are all over it, but they're not biting. And here we go. We're switching. I'm switching right now. Look at that, just a bear hook, little circle hook, not too little, where if a, if a nice one, if a snook comes along, we miss him, but little enough. All right, bear hook, I'm wondering if I, see, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out, but the weird thing was, I caught fish on that jig head in the video that you guys will see published today, so not really sure what's going on. Hmm. I wonder if there's lobster down there in the canal. Lobster in the canal? That would be epic. I mean, we have all these rock walls. Uh-huh. I'm looking to see if I see any antenna sticking out. I haven't yet. Uh-huh. I wonder if it's legal to, to lobster hunt in the canal. You know, maybe there's a rule against it. Because it seems like people would be doing that if there were, but you never know, you know, sometimes if you just like drop in off the, off your dock, your local dock. All right, guys, plain hook. Let's see if this turns the luck around, okay? Plain hook, strip of bait. Can't cast it very far. All right, I'm gonna send you guys back because this might be action now. Might be action. I'm ready. I'm braced. Mm-hmm. I see something cruising by. Hey, buddy, got a bait down here. Fresh. This is as fresh as it gets. It was alive a few minutes ago. No? Oh, he's looking at it. I can see a fish looking at it. But again, he's just looking at it. Oh, I can see some fish down here. But they aren't biting. Maybe it's just one of those things. I can't tell what most of them are. I do see parrotfish because parrotfish are real easy. They're so colorful. They're really easy to tell. But the other ones, I don't know. I don't know what they are. so 
wonder if you could show people if they could see that. If, you know, That's a big parrot fish. Oh, he's huge. Oh, he's huge. It's a mongo. He's looking at mine. You have a bobber? I do. Oh, he's biting it. He's biting it. He nibbled. He got a taste. He's swimming around. Eat it. He's nibbling around the edges. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? Doing. He knows what he's doing. He's dissecting my bait. Like a surgeon, like a surgeon. He went around and dink, 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 dink. That is crazy. So he can't see the hook. Maybe I have to get a really, really small hook on. Gosh, I can't, there's a mongo, a mongo parrotfish down here, folks. Yeah, I'm gonna cast this out one more time. Not gonna give up on it. In fact, let me get a new piece of bait here. You know, I might have to do, we have to do battle with a pair of fish. May have to get on the smallest hook possible. You know what you should do with that, Pops? The leader is so big, yeah. you're gonna have a problem with that. If you, there's some like 15 pound test in that okay. tackle bag up there, if you put on, or maybe even something lighter, if you could find yeah. it. Yeah. And then a tiny hook and try to catch that big dude. I'll do it. That would be, guys, it's a big, big, beautiful pair of fish. He's kind of near, the, he'd be hard for you guys to see because the camera, the phone can't see in the water but if we caught him and brought him up that would be cool you know a weird florida law get this you can keep parrotfish but you must keep them alive how about that so you can have a parrotfish in the live well but if they find you with a dead one it's a it's a penal uh, uh you get a ticket and you can only take them home and put them in your aquarium. You can't eat them. But how do you regulate that? Like, if somebody has parrotfish in their live well, they could be like, yeah, I'm just using these as aquarium fish. <laughs> and like, yeah, you just use them as aquarium fish. You could say whatever you wanted, and then you take them home, and basically you could eat them or do whatever. So that's kind of a funny law to me. You must, you, you can keep parrotfish, but they must be kept alive. It's like, okay. I can see lots of problems with people just taking them home and eating them. There's so many out there from what I've seen in Florida though, I don't think they have a problem with uh, underpopulation, let's put it that way. They aren't an endangered fish. Oh, I missed him. I missed him. All of a sudden, I was watching my bait coat at the bottom, and all of a sudden, it just like disappeared. I got a little tiny snapper looking at it now. There are some fish getting around here, folks, but they just are, uh, they're not real active.
Getting a little bite now. I just had a snapper eat some off, dang it. Come on. Well, I thought there'd be way more action than this. Really did. I got a parrotfish looking at it now. Parrotfish eyeballing the bait. Folks, we've got a lot of fish that have set up camp here, moving in, feeding on all the chum, or at least looking at all the chum, but uh, have yet to catch one. They're definitely gathering, though. Got little ones pecking at it. Lots of little ones. They're loving it, but the hook is too big and I don't care to catch the little ones. Hmm. If you could live stream underwater. With every, like with every second that goes by, there are fish just gathering around. This is crazy actually. Like the more I stare into the water, the more fish I see just starting to swim. Hmm. Very strange, very curious. Let me cut up a fresh one. Fresh piece of ballyhoo. try a new strategy what I think is happening these fish come around since the water's clear they can see everything I noticed that time when I left my bait on the bottom and like just let didn't even move it they were actually more interested I thought if I jigged it or something like that that would um, bring them in but it didn't so I'm gonna try throwing this out there a little hook little strip of bait just let it hit the bottom and then i'm just gonna kind of do a q a with you guys and um while we wait for that maybe this will yield something different small hook no sinker whatsoever we're just gonna let it drift to the bottom very very naturally uh, let me see if i can answer some more questions here Do you ever come to Virginia to fish? You know, I've actually have fished um, in Virginia a couple of times, several times, actually pretty frequently in Virginia. Um, I really like it there. I like the, uh, like some of the rivers that are in the mountains there. So three day challenge in the Florida mangroves. That would be a really cool video. Greetings from Tampa, Florida. We're pretty close. We're pretty close. Greetings from Germany. Fort Worth. I actually did a Texas series and uh, it was interesting. Thank you for the one dollar. Who did you give one dollar? Somebody gave one dollar. Somebody said come to Guam. Thank you. Oh, they're going by so fast. I L Y B. Greetings from Canada. Catch and cook. Yeah, I gotta check out my baits real quick. Let me make sure both of them are good and then I'll get back to it. My dad's gonna try to, they have a mongo couple of parrotfish swimming around down here. And my father is going to fish for him in a second here. Don't go anywhere, this might get real interesting. Thank you for the $1 again. 
Welcome to the free state. Florida is the free state. And I just read the other day that there are more, they had more visitors to Florida in 2021 than in the history of the state. They had more, more tourists. So that's pretty cool. Canada or a California trip. Three day challenge again. I'm getting, I'm getting the vibes that everybody wants to see another three day challenge. Ohio, greetings from Fresno, California. Canada, catch you. Love to see Canada catch a cook. We have Cali, California. Minnesota. Thank you. There's a moderator somewhere in that I see them putting people on ice. Oh, is that Tosh? Tash? Ta Tosh? Tash? Greetings from the Philippines. Three day challenge. Yeah, I'm getting the vibe. Everybody's like three day challenge. Everybody wants to see a three day challenge. We'll have to do that. Yeah, that's somebody said keys are better than Hawaii because no mandates. And that's actually why, why I'm here right now because, uh, because Hawaii is so ridiculous. And you don't want to get stuck on an island, you know? What are you doing, Pops? Well, I got, got a six pound test leader. Six pound? Yeah, oh, I nice. The off. flyers are right there. Oh, guys, guys, okay, so we, I, I had trouble. The, the parrotfish are hungry. But they're a little wise, they're a little too smart. My dad has put six pound test and a tiny hook on. Maybe he'd get one of these big, colorful, beautiful be fun fish. To show everybody. The thing is, is, is that they have teeth. And oh, so yeah. You gotta have them bite only on the hook. Only on the hook, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. It's fun. <laughs> There's, I'm cutting my dad up a little piece right here, a little piece of bait. Let's see if he can get a pair of fish. Think you want to bury the hook? What do you think? Uh huh. You know, the ballyhoo is like softer. I wonder if it's getting mushy, like out in the sun too long. Um, this is actually still feels a little cold. Okay. So whatever you want, I'll just cut off some little chunks. Yeah, this one's can... absolutely fresh oh, yeah. as far as that's from that minnow. I just killed that minnow. I so, like it. all right, greetings from Pennsylvania. I'm going to turn the camera around here, folks, and uh, let's see if my dad can get something here. No pressure pops, no pressure whatsoever. I like the pressure, pressure situation. <laughs> so here's what we got, just a little leader. A little, a little bit of bait. <laughs> a little teeny tiny hook. Let's see if we can't find ourselves some parrotfish. I'm gonna go weightless for now, no bobber or anything. Just let it sink down there. I got my drag set real light. Guys, all along these uh, retaining walls here, tons of parrotfish just swim around. They just nip on the rocks and stuff like that. So let's see. Uh, Oh yeah, there they are. There's a bunch of them. Caribbean Saint Lucas. Is that what it is? Saint Lucas, I think. Yeah. No pressure, only 800 people watching from South Africa. You know, maybe I should just have it focused on me, and until you hook up, that way you can uh, focus on your what you're doing. Oh, we got a seaplane coming. We got a seaplane. If he comes close, you guys see him over the trees there? That is so cool. Oh, we got gear up survival in the comment section. That's a seaplane, folks. We got stories about seaplanes coming up here. Oh, that is so cool. I love seaplanes. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Greetings from Jamaica via Georgia. You better subscribe. We did. Come. Miami Boat Show. We went to the Miami Boat Show. That was cool. Fan from the Caribbean. Is Neil from the Caribbean in the comment section? Michigan. Hello from Denmark. Greetings from the Bay Area and Trinidad. We got Trinidad. Ukraine. Did my love life die? Oh, look, look, look. I'm getting a bite. Look on this one. Yeah, got him. Oh, oh, I missed him. I missed him. I did you see it was a steady. How did I miss him? There's just like steady pressure. Shoot. Well, I get a good bite. 
and I whiff. I whiff. It's a good sign. I got it where it's sitting right by the that thing there, and they seemed they almost thought it was part of a part of it or something like that, and that's when I got the most bites for whatever that's worth. Okay. It's almost like they thought it was a creature coming off of it. Right. All right, my friends. They're there still, but they're way underneath. Really. Hey, that works as long as the phone doesn't fall in the water. We'll have a real interesting video. <laughs> I gotta see what damage that fish did. Oh, he stripped part of it away. Hmm. I'm gonna shake the bait bag a minute. Alrighty. Well, I did get a bite just throwing it out there and letting a natural piece of bait sit on the bottom. It was a good bite where the fish was actually swimming away from it. Gear up survival in the comments. Where the fish was actually had it in his mouth and was swimming away from it. And he's leaving me bananas. He's leaving me banana stuff. Wow. Wow. Stop putting bananas in the comment section. That's bad luck. Biggest fish of the year, that would be cool. We got the shark line out there. Still haven't gotten anything on the shark line yet, but it's out there and they're cruising through. We've seen sharks in the canal. Yes, yeah. yes. So. Seen videos too of guys catching sharks in canals. So we're hopeful. There's a little ray again. There's a ray down. down at about three or four feet of water. Oh, look, look, a, a needlefish. A needlefish has the bait. I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah. You see it? Yeah. Come on, eat it, guys. I have a needlefish. He has my bait. Oh, that's your bait. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Do I? He doesn't have. He hasn't swallowed it though. Yeah, you let him take it a bit like a gar, huh? Yeah, guys. Okay, I have a needlefish with my bait. He's sitting on the surface where you can see him, but he's just like chowing on it. He's kind of kind of a small one, but he has the bait. Oh, he just let it go. Oh, nope, he no, he back. came back. No, he's tearing it up. He's trying to get it. Oh, maybe he tries that. He's, he's a little too small where you can't swallow it, really. So maybe you just have to hook it. He, he just spit it out and grabbed it again. <laughs> he's like, like a little dog. dog. <laughs> he's trying to eat it. Oh, look at him. <laughs> That's, That's cool. too funny. Oh, look, a bigger one has it. You see that? See, a bigger one grabbed oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. oh yeah, he, oh. he's got it. Oh, oh, shoot! A big, there a couple oh, there, there. I'm all right, he, there, too. Look, look at him. Tear it around on the surface. Oh, guys, we got... We got uh, oh, he grabbed it. Or, no, he's looking at it. Guys, we got, we got uh, uh, needlefish. That's Sight fishing some, for needlefish. Sight fishing <laughs> for... A big one came over and started to grab it. Fairly interessante. Come on, you little booger. We had a possum in front of our... Oh, that was weird, a dead possum. Today. Love your videos. Thanks. Gear up survival. Is we he, got some uh, needlefish. in the house? Oh, gear up? That's uh, a nice size needlefish. Yeah, let me see if they can... He was like a little dog, like tearing the, the piece of bait up, but... Needlefish have small mouths, so he didn't swallow it. This is too this is too crazy that we have so many fish swimming around and just not just not action. They're just not biting. I guess that's fishing, you know, for you though. I mean, we've gotten some nibbles, gotten a few bites, but uh Nothing's one to commit.
I see some parrotfish on the cruise. So I'm getting a bite now. That is so interesting. I only get bites when I leave it just sitting by on, a, on the bottom. Oh yeah. Yeah, you see, see that? Yeah. See that? All right, come on. Let's be. Let's get one right here. Here we go. I'm gonna let him take it. Patience, patience. They only want it sitting on the bottom. They do not want it jigged or anything today. Just being a little snotty. Oh, stole it. Pick me clean. Darn fish. I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got that little tiny hook, a little tiny leader. Just let it rest upon the bottom. Yeah, because these aren't right here on bite you know, that's for sure. They yeah. don't look at it, but they just All right, so we stole the bait. It's been kind of fun because we've had these uh, mottled colored little rays about yeah, I don't know what kind 10 of those inches are. or so. And they just float along sometimes. Look at the stink. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Guys, he's needlefish, he's eating it, he's eating it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got him. You got him. Oh, yes. yes. Yes! Look at it! I got a got a crazy needle fish here. Oh, this is a hound fish, actually. This guy's got some crazy teeth. Could you grab the camera? Yes. Oh man, look at that. He came right over and oh just came off the hook. There we go. Cool. Gotta show him those teeth on This guy actually is very toothy. Have to be a little careful of him. Or he's gonna, he can get me. Nice, nice, nice. All right, check that out, guys. A little toothy. Oh, all right. We actually know these guys can cut you. These fish can get very big yeah. and they can cut you. That's for sure. Well, these are the ones that call poor man's marlin when they're uh, real big. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember you caught like a three or four pounder. It was a long one yes. in Hawaii. He That's just, cool. That Let's is cool. Ooh, teeth. careful. They're, oh, those are big. Yeah, yeah, those are yeah. big those teeth, are nice even for a small teeth. fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's parrying with me. Uh, yeah, I think I'll leave. Let's see if we can get right upon them. They, they have, for such a small yeah. fish, they have big teeth. And when they get a little bit bigger, they have really big teeth. Yeah, All right, let's uh, throw him back. Cool. Cool, cool. I saw him dart right over. First fish. Of the day. And let's see what he does. Little revival, little slow. Uh, if he doesn't kick, well, he's kicking, but if, if he, he doesn't, doesn't take off, we're eating him. <laughs> eating him? How about using him for bait, man? <laughs> I would try eating one. Would you? Yeah. There you go. Oh, he's uh, he's writing himself. He's he's figuring it out. Hope y'all can like, see that. It's like, what just happened, man? <laughs> There we go. Well, folks. Right, there you go. I've got a bite. Excuse you got me. a bite on yours? Oh, now we got some action. It just took a little bit. Gear Up Survival gave $10. Thank you. We have this uh, this fight going down next spring. Let's see if my dad gets one here. All right, folks. We got fish moving around. That guy's We've got things. recovering down there. If he doesn't recover, we're eating him. I'm going to eat houndfish for the first time. They're supposed to not be that great. But we've heard that line before. We've heard that people are like, oh, um, what was it? Jack Craval aren't very good. Jack Craval are, are just fine to eat. So maybe we should do that. Maybe, is he still down there and did he take off? Uh, he went back here, I'll tell you. Mm. Might be gone. Look at this beautiful yeah, thing. He's, yeah, he's struggling. He's, he's struggling. I might go get him. We'll eat him. Might just do that. I still haven't seen any sharks swim by, despite all the chum in the water. No sharks, but there was one point last time we gave me oh coconut crusted houndfish. Eric Anderson. Oh, that's a good idea. Coconut crusted something. That's what I should do. Coconut crusted. Find another coconut. 
Yeah, we're in Florida. Plenty of coconuts around here. All right. Leave you guys there. There we go. All right, let's get another one. All right, first fish. Got the skunk out of the yeah. uh, whatever. Skunk off the shore, something like that. Where's this uh, cloth? And that's a drying cloth right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a second one now that the skunk is out. I think we figured out a little bit of the formula. Just do straight up um, bare hooks because they're so skittish right now. That's just what we got to do. They, if they see sinkers and swivels and all that stuff, they're, they're freaking out. They don't want anything to do with it. This ballyhoo head has gotten warm in the sun. You see that? We're going to throw that out there. This still smells. You know what? I'm going to throw that out there. Absolutely fresh piece. This is what we're using, by the way, if you just joined us. No, piece they're tearing your bag up. I mean, they, they just pulled the bag. Huh. Oh, there's a big piece of bait they're pulling away. That's See, there's no hook in it. They're, they're just, I don't know. This Today, they're they're so skittish for some reason. Bad day to do a live stream when the fish are all so skittish. That happens in fresh water. It happens in salt water. We're just going to let this piece of bait go to the bottom and... Uh, See if just the same strategy again. Let it drift naturally. The um, uh, the fish that you caught. What's it called again? Hound a hound, hound fish. fish. Yeah, hound Part fish. of the needle fish family. The hound fish is struggling still. Oh, struggling. Yeah, but let me grab the him. bottom. If we want to get him, we'll probably have to get a. Uh, mask on and go down the ground. Ah. Swim down. Yeah. I'm a little nervous about swimming here with uh, all nah. the fish. All the bait out. Yeah, I'll have to go get him. Maybe after the live stream. Cook him up. Hmm. See how the current's going? Like, oh, I feel... He, he just made it up. Oh. Made... Yep, he's over by the boat. He's, he's, uh... Oh, yeah, there he is. Dang it. I kind of wanted to try one and eat one. <laughs> Alright, what we're going to do is I'm going to leave just sitting there. It seems like if I have my, I'm bouncing it and stuff if I keep holding it. So I just what do you need have all that one? This has a, just a big chunk of ballyhoo on it. Okay. I may have gotten picked clean by crabs or something. Nope. No? Wow. Folks, for like 30 minutes that chunk of ballyhoo's been down there and just nothing has gotten them. And it smells fresh. It's fine. Just one of them days. Just going to be hard. Just going to grind it out, you know? Oh, wait, did I cast over yours? Uh, I'll bring it in. I'll cast more this way. Just did the classic rude thing, cast right over somebody else's line. There we go. Yeah, I think that one made it. He's, he's not on the surface anymore. That's crazy. Hmm. Just wipe my face with the fish cloth. That's not really good. Mm. Interesting taste sensation, mm -hmm. no doubt. Mm -hmm. Better not do any kissing for a while.
Do you have any stories for us, Pops? Any stories? Um, well, you know, when we were on the boat, when you caught the shark. Mm -hmm. Well, how about I switch uh, with you? Okay. Yeah. Can you tell them a story. I'm gonna. Uh, those pair. There are some big. There ones. are some big ones down there. I'll take my glasses off and put my other glasses on so I can see. Oh, what do we have? Just go to the hound fish. Love your videos. Caught anything yet? Yeah, we just caught a needlefish. Uh, change spots. Yeah, well, that's an idea. Oh, Eric Anderson, stay in Florida. Let's go, Brandon. Freedom wins. Just did a super chat. Thank you, Eric. Hi, Papa Ace. Hello, Ace's dad. Gear up survival, $20. Good heavens. Thank you, man. Wow. Thank you. Um, what's up, me ancient? I'll try to oh. catch a parrotfish for you. Come to Daytona Beach. This stuff is going by so fast. Let's get it, Papa. <laughs> hey, Pops. A lot of Pops. Washington State on the chat. Visit the Great Lakes. Northern mm -hmm. Illinois. Change spots. We wow, can't. you know, yeah, we can't. We're, we're here where we're staying, so... Um, Anyway, so do you guys want to hear any story? I see Missouri, Malaysia, fried possum, um, shrimp or live bait. Yeah, we tried the live bait, believe me. Uh, Colorado, wow, turkey, no way, wow. $50 for two fish in two minutes. <laughs> Netherlands, oh yeah, I've been to the Netherlands. If you watch my channel, I tell a few stories about the Netherlands, had a good time there. Um, anyway. England, Ukraine, West Virginia Beach, Maryland, Utah, Cambodia. That is amazing, like Asa said earlier. How, you, you spin me a yarn, Pops. <laughs> Texas, Alabama, New Jersey, Arkansas, India. Wow. Well, I, I told a little bit about this last time when we did a live stream when Asa caught the shark. So, But a lot of folks couldn't hear it because I was away from the speaker. So now hopefully y'all can hear me okay is that right can you hear this let's see here chicken breast is the be best iowa fishing i grew up in iowa anybody have any tips for parrot fishing yeah how, how about that yeah any tips for parrot fishing we see them all over down there anybody have any tips hip-hop lynn two dollars love your videos thank you hip-hop dallas cowboys it's their year um let's see here so anyway there's some huge parrotfish. I just can't get them. Well, they you, nip at it. Use mine too if you want. Wow. Um, so, loud and clear. There you go. Salted. Got to go to work. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Salted. Appreciate that. Use mullet for parrotfish. If we see a school of mullet go by, we will throw the uh, cast net out there and see if we see what we can get. Gear up survival. Two dollars. Pops, adventure me, please. <laughs> okay. So. When we did the last live stream with when Asa caught the big shark and hauled it over the side of the boat, um, I was telling about the keys and a little bit of the history of the keys. It's pretty interesting. When uh, Ponce de Leon w arrived in the Americas, in Florida specifically, of course, he was searching. Anybody know what Ponce de Leon was searching for? Yeah, we have caught a needlefish. Ponce de Leon was searching for the fountain of youth. And um, anyway... So he arrived and there were two different tribes of Indians on the Florida, in the Florida Keys area already. And um, uh, he ended up uh, going past and going up, of course, he, he died in Arkansas, actually kind of interesting, present day Arkansas, but I'm getting, getting down a rabbit trail. So he was the first guy, to, white guy to make contact here that we know of. And then um, I say that because when, uh, Columbus came over and then Cortez a few years later. When Cortez went over to uh, central Mexico, there were already priests there who had gotten blown off, Jesuit priests who'd gotten blown off course uh, when they were going to Africa and ended up in South America and ended up where the Incas and the Aztecs were. So we only know what's written as far as those kinds of things go, but there were, there were white folks in uh, the Americas before Columbus actually. So, but anyway, I, I love that reading that kind of stuff. So, so we fast forward several hundred years and we get to the uh, late 1800s and um, a guy who had been in the uh, Southern Confederacy during the Civil War um, decided to move down to South 
Florida to the Keys because he heard that there were a lot of shipwrecks down here and he thought, you know, there might be a chance to do some salvage operations. And so he came down and kind of headed up the effort and uh, so many ships would, everybody's saying you, sh you try using shrimp on the parachute. I don't, they were out of shrimp at the yeah, time. Yeah, they were out of sh shrimp guys, so we'd love to, but um, anyway, uh, he, he uh, hired crews and they would go out and salvage the, um, the wrecks. And then, of course, now this is back in the days when the Keys, there was no highway, there was no railroad. It was just all boat traffic. So, uh, uh, sorry, I'm reading comments too. Uh, I grew up in the Marion, Iowa, if you know that area. Cedar Rapids, kind of the south central to the east a little bit. But um, anyway, so they, they would take the goods that they were salvaging from the ships and either settle with the, help the insurance company and settle, or mostly they would just sell it, salvage it. They'd put it on their own boats and they knew the, the shoals and the tides and how to navigate and they would head up north and sell the goods that they picked up. And that went on for, in fact, in, <laughs> this is interesting, in the Keys, people came from all over Cuba, uh, you got to remember, this is before Cuba's, you know, present day communist Cuba. They came from Cuba, the, the Caribbean, all through the Caribbean, all the different islands to come up here to help because they could make really good money salvaging uh, these ships. And what they do is they'd salvage as much as they could. A lot of times the ships would be listed on their sides or, or um, um, run aground on, on, a, on a reef or something. And they'd go in and they'd pull as much stuff out as they could load it onto their little skiffs, bring it back to land and, and organize it to get it up north to sell. And um, they, as soon as they got gear up survival, $50, chat, please subscribe. Wow. 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 Thank you so gear much. survival, save your money. Yeah, save Thank your money, you. dude. <laughs> yeah, it's awfully kind, but wow, I think he wants to fight maybe, huh? Oh. I, <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I didn't get to read the comment, but anyway. Um, so they would... Um, um, get as much, I've been to Iowa Falls, yes. Um, they would, they've been to, or they would get as much stuff as they could off the ships, salvage whatever they could, and then they would burn the ships to the water line. They'd just set them on fire. And the reason they'd set them on fire was because that way other ships coming later on wouldn't be able to see that there was a dangerous shoal <laughs> and they would hope for them to crash again. At least that's what the history books say. Um, I, I got to think that might be true. It meant for more business for them. So for 50 years, get this, for 50 years in the Keys of Florida, the per capita income was higher in the Keys than anywhere else in the United States. And I got to think about what was going on. This is from like 1870 to the early 1900s or about 40 years. Those people were making so much money salvaging wrecks that per individual on an average basis, they made more money than anywhere else in the United States. There was whaling going on. There was oil being discovered. There was a lot of railroads. I mean, a lot of stuff was going on. And yet these people down here are making tons of money. Anyway, so ended up that the, that trade died off with the uh, paddle boat, steam board, uh, steamboat ships and the different things that uh, uh, could navigate around. They didn't have to try to go in a short short distance, a, a, a straight line. They could navigate around the shoals. And um, so that died off. Well, then somebody figured out when they were diving the wrecks that they could find, there, there were sponges. The, the, the keys at one point were the, uh, the most uh, abundant uh, sponge grounds in, in the world. They were, they were going down grabbing sponges and just making a killing off sponge hunting. And they would take, pick them up, dry them out, cut them, do whatever. And then they'd send them up north and sell them for really good money. So there was another thing they did. Uh, and then there was a huge hurricane in, in the... In the country. Yeah, I would love that. There was a huge hurricane in... Uh, one in the late 1890s and one in like 1933, I think it was. Anyway, the, um, the hurricane just destroyed the uh, sponge industry which is interesting because Ace and I have been out here snorkeling and you've seen, if you've watched his videos, uh, you've seen the, there's like bone yards out here of coral, just all kinds of 
coral that uh, is just for hundreds of yards, just laying out there white, just dead. And uh, we have, we've had a couple locals say that happened when Hurricane Andrew blew through here several years ago. So anyway, that was kind of interesting. Um, but uh, so we've got, what are you up to, Asa? I just changed out the water. Ah, okay. Yeah, for the minnows. Gotcha. So in the late 1890s, $5, Gear Up Survival. We love you, me ancient. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Love you, uh, Gear Up Survival. Yeah, Asa says love you back, man. <laughs> uh, so anyway, in the late 1890s. Actually, it, stupid. Yeah, okay. Gear Up Survival, now you're stupid. I don't know what to say. Um, but back in the late 1890s, a guy by the name of Flagler, who was a really big time uh, railroad guy, railroad tycoon. Um, he was friends with uh, people like uh, Carnegie or Carnegie and uh, Rockefeller and all those guys. Uh, anyway, he um, decided he wanted to build a railroad down to the Keys. So, no, we're not big into ice fishing, George. Not at all. Oh, ice fishing. <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> um, anyway. I come to warm places every year. Yes, and we did catch something. Asa caught a needle or a hound. Uh, hound fish. Looks like a needle. That's part of the needle fish family. Anyway, uh, so Mr. Flagler came down and decided to build a railroad. And after uh, two or three or four uh, failed attempts or storms had come in and and blow away the, the pilings and stuff, they finally got it done. All the way from uh, Miami down to um, the end to Key West. And uh, then the big hurricane in 1933 hit it and destroyed so much of the railroad and they never rebuilt it. So there are pieces and parts of the railroad still around or the railroad bed that didn't get destroyed by the hurricane. And also some of the pilings survived and they've used those pilings for the highway at different times. I don't know that they use any of those pilings any longer. Vlad, Vlad M, $50. Vlad, if you're Whoa. the Vlad, thank you so much. If you're the Vlad that sent me a, um, an MRE, make sure you message me. I, I need to talk with you. I need to get a better address from you if it's the same Vlad. But anyway, um, probably more than one Vlad out there <laughs> be my guess. But um, so uh, we... We uh, so the the railroad was sketchy at, at best, and now of course with the uh, uh, ability to build bridges, which man, that's a fascinating history. If you ever want to read a great book about engineering that you can, anybody can understand, it's called. Uh, um, I say that because I understood it. Um, it's by McCullough, and it's about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. That is a great read, either on tape or actually read it yourself. So. Anyway, so the Keys have a lot of history, and nowadays the Keys is mostly known for the warm weather in the winter, year-round fishing, uh, even old, um, what's his name, uh, the author, uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, he, he, uh, he lived in Idaho for a while, he actually committed suicide in Idaho, um, good heavens, Hemingway, that's his name, Hemingway, Hemingway, Hemingway loved to come down here, he actually lived in Cuba. Again, remember, that was before Cuba was communist. He lived in Cuba, he lived in the Keys, and um, his sister boat, he, his boat that he had, which a man has bought the, the boat that Hemingway owned and fished from for a long time, um, uh, the sister boat is actually on display at uh, Bass Pro Shops in Isla Mirada, and it's quite cool. And they used part of that boat to film um, the, the uh, movie um, Key Largo and uh, with Humphrey Bogart and um, uh, what was her name the gal he married Lauren Bacall I think that's where they first met she was quite a bit younger than he was but anyway so there you go that's my my story I guess for now hope you enjoyed it and uh, why is he talking on Ace's channel for so long that, that's that's right I can, now you know where if you know Mike and now you know where he gets it from <laughs> I think they want to hear from you, Asa. I don't think they all want right, to hear I'm me anymore. Show, the, the, the parrotfish keep gathering around. I'm going to show them all these parrotfish. I, I think they'll be able to see because the parrotfish have gotten used to us. Watch this. Watch this. All right, guys, I'm going to turn you around. Let's try to get close to them. There are some monsters in here. Hopefully the phone doesn't drop underwater. All right, we're going to get close. That's really not funny. I'm gonna try to sneak up on him. You guys see him down there? All right, we're looking from far away first. So you see, see they're just gathering, but we can't catch any. We got shrimp. Look how big that one is that's looking at it. These are mongo parrot fish. All right, let's get closer. Let's see. Yeah, it'll be so cool. 
Oh, wow. I didn't even see all of them over here. Look at that, guys. It's like an aquarium down here. Can you guys see that? They are just all over. Chowing down on the rocks and everything. Is that cool? I actually saw a stingray go by just a minute ago. Maybe. All right, look, at, they're just all along these rocks, just the, down the whole thing. We haven't been able to catch a single one. Got some little like uh, some little like bluegill looking ones too. But they are just all. That's what we've been trying to catch. We just haven't been able to catch them. That is so crazy, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, um, anybody have any parrot fish tips for me? Besides, yeah, shrimp. People are saying shrimp. The tackle stores, everybody was out of shrimp because it's a Saturday. I should have gotten there way earlier. But, um, but I don't know. Cast net, somebody says. That would be cool. I think that's illegal. To, no, it's not illegal. Look at all of them. They're just everywhere. That is so cool. I wonder if you could live stream underwater, you know? Anyway. There's the aquarium going on underneath us. I would love to catch them, but we can't right now. Look at that. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. They're all along these rocks. Just hundreds of them out here. What do you think, Pops? I don't know. What, you know maybe I should throw them. Oh, well, I was thinking about throwing like a spinner or a spoon or something. But they're, not, they're not chasing them. Yeah. Guys, we're really, we're really baffled. You can't get shrimp. You've got live minnows and you're not doing the live minnows. I wonder if it's like bacon or something. I don't know. Bacon? <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, my friends. So, we're just going to keep at it. For those who want to hang out, you can hang out. For those who, uh, you know, I was hoping for a shark or something like that. But it's just been, it's been interesting that's the risk you take live streaming so my bet dad's gonna be back he's gonna look for some bacon maybe some bacon will turn our day around i don't know jump in the water boy it's hot enough out here man that sounds real nice but with all the chum in the water see the ho hope of the chum was to bring sharks in and i don't want to mess with that i don't want to jump in if there if there are some sharks coming around because they could show up any minute florida's a very sharky place try one more time and if I don't get anything these parrot fish we have a small hook small piece of bait Had a bite.
is all I could find. What is it, Lamar? What is that in your hand? Though? It's chicken. It's oh, chicken. chicken. I, I couldn't well, find. Let's try it. I, I couldn't find any um, uh, any of the pork. I think Mom might have put it all in the pot. You know the, the oh. pieces and stuff. Chicken so, guys will try chicken. I don't know. Try, let's try some chicken meat first. <sighs> Cooked chicken meat, I might add. When will they turn on, I wonder? Like, will they come? Because yeah. all this bait sitting down there? Yeah. Yeah, I can still see some of the bait down there. Cooked chicken going on, my friends. And then I got chicken skin after that. We've caught bass using chicken. Oh, you want some skin? Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see if chicken gets it. I don't know. The trouble is it might float, huh? Oh, it's very light. Ooh. Could we get a fish on chicken? I'm <laughs> Better get out of the way. Oh, I need to tell another story for you. Yes, tell us some stories. Okay. Welcome back, Pops. Okay. Let's see. We got Gear Up Survival, five dollars. Teddy Roosevelt was a great Oh yeah, yeah. Is Gear Up Survival made of money? I, I, he must be. He must... Gear Up Survival must be like the son of a millionaire or something. Yeah, like something. Like or maybe he's a millionaire himself. himself. I don't know anything about Gear Up Survival yeah. actually. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Gear Up Survival. Anyway, Teddy Roosevelt, that's an interesting character. Um, chicken didn't work by the way. Chicken they're not interested at all. No. Okay. Well we tried. And I, I can't see the uh, deals very well, but um, let's see. I might have to go back and look at some of these because I can't, like I say, I can't try a piece of cheese. Cheese? Real estate brokers, gear states, gear up survival is what somebody guessed. So we'll have to look at these later. Anyway, Teddy Roosevelt, I think the part of the coolest thing about Teddy Roosevelt to me, no, nah, not the coolest, but one of the interesting things, we've got... Gosh, somebody just gave five more dollars, and I, I didn't see who it was. Sorry. I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I You can tap. Can, see how there's, like, little icons in the corner there? If you tap on some of those, it brings up the, oh, okay. the message. Okay. Try seaweed. We've heard that work, says Cosby Swing. Well, thank you, Cosby Swing. Um, we got plenty of them down <laughs> there. Let me keep trying. When Teddy Roosevelt was a kid, I mean, like a little boy, he had asthma really bad. And I can relate to that because I have a brother who had asthma, ended up in the hospital quite often. I can remember going to see him in the hospital. I was too little to go in, and I had to look at him through the window. My uncle, Ken, would take me to go see him. And uh, I, he, my mom and dad would take him to the window, and we'd wave at each other, and probably both of us cry. But anyway, so asthma was a big part of my family when I was growing up. And then I had two sons that, uh, two of Ace's brothers had asthma as kids. And so Teddy Roosevelt, when he was a... A youngster, his dad, he had asthma really bad, real bad difficulty breathing, uh, breathing problems in general. And um, his father would take him uh, at in the in at nights. Uh, they, he grew up in New York City, and his father would take him at nights in on carriage rides. And again, this is back in the eighteen, I think eighteen fifties, eighteen late eighteen forties, eighteen fifty time frame. His father would take him on carriage rides because he felt like jumping and driving over the cobblestone streets and the things would and he would have him lay flat and it would it would help him to breathe better so that's kind of a uh, interesting thing his dad really uh, thought a lot about it and he, that he understood that was the best way to treat that at the time they didn't have the medicines we do now now you have an inhaler and do all kind of allergy medicine things like that they didn't have that then not in the, in the forms we have it and then the other thing that they that he did was he would he put a uh, they lived in like a four or five story uh, brownstone and on the very top floor he put in a gymnasium with pins and weights uh, like bowling pins and they had a series a regimen of exercises they would do to strengthen his upper body in the assumption that if he do that he would strengthen his lungs so 
Teddy Roosevelt spent his whole childhood kind of uh, cloistered because he had so much trouble breathing. And when he became a young man, I don't remember 16, 17, I think it was either before or right when he went to college, my, either a little bit before as he was going into college, um, a doctor told him, you're just going to have to re relegate yourself to a lifetime of, of sitting still and taking it easy and, and you know not doing anything real hard physically. And he said, I'd rather die than do that. So he scheduled a trip into the uh, north woods of Maine. And again, this is 1850, 18, early 1860s. The north woods of Maine were the north woods of Maine. And there weren't hospitals and emergency rooms and American survivalists uh, gives a dollar. Thank you so much. Um, they didn't have a lot of comfort. So he arrived in, in Maine and the guy that he had hired to be his guide to go in and they just started walking, uh, canoes and walking. And um, the guy wrote later, he said, when that young man arrived, I didn't, I didn't think he'd make it a day, or let alone a week. And Roosevelt ended up staying out. I don't know how many months it was, but he ended up staying out and he found that the outdoors really invigorated him. And um, I, of course he was an outdoor enthusiast his whole life after that. Uh, several good books on um, Roosevelt by, uh, 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 well, there's a river of doubt, a river of no return, and a um, no, river of doubt. And then there are the Theodorus Rex. Um, a lot of good books about Roosevelt out there. So anyway, yeah, Teddy Roosevelt is an interesting historical figure. Uh, speed reader too, interestingly enough. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look up here, see if I can see. Vlad M, $50. Again, thank you, Vlad. And then Europe Survival Fidel chat, please subscribe to Ace Videos, Me Ancient, as well as High Adventure Videos. Hearts in chat. Well, that's awfully nice. Doggone. Tell you what, real kind people out there. That's pretty cool. Try worms. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Asa says thank you, too. Oh, um, try worms? Mate, we have plenty of fish down here. Dominique Olson, 99 cents. Thank you, Dominique. Um, we love the stories, ignore the haters and the trolls. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't get me started. I could bore you to tears, I'm afraid. Um, any luck over here? Anything going on? No. I'll tell you what, guys, we know there are fish in here because we see them swimming back and forth in the canal. But uh, we've got we've got big cut bait out there. We've got small cut bait out there and a um, little bit of everything else. So here, hello, hugs from Brazil. That's cool. Have you ever went fishing in Iowa Falls? Iowa Falls. I don't know that I ever fished in Iowa Falls. I fished in a lot of places in Iowa. Grew up there. But, um, um, yeah, I heard y'all are having some cold weather. Uh, I'm glad I'm down here. That's all I got to say. Um, use live bait. Cut off the lower tail. Well, that's an idea. Um, I saw a video where a guy caught a bluegill with a leader, leaf and a hook. Yeah, that's true. We've the boys, uh, we were at a fishing lake in Idaho one time, or a, a lake in Idaho, a pond. It was actually a pond on a golf course, and we didn't have any bait. So Asa here, I don't know, he was about 12 years old or so, he went into the trees and got a bunch of line down from the trees, found a hook in a tree. As I recall, you either did a hand line or you got a branch. I don't remember which way. I get just hand line because hand there line. were docks and it need really. Okay, yeah, okay, Jake Moriarty, you should come somewhere. Gear up survival, I just want to punch Ace. That's all. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. It'd be like my grandma punching me. <laughs> he says, I get tired of money. It makes me sick how we all want it. He just wants to punch you in the face, Ace. That's Gear Up Survival. God bless you, Gear Up Survival. <laughs> anyway. I wouldn't um, mind getting punched by Gear Up Survival. Like one of my aunts or grandma punching me. Wow. Make me laugh. Wow. Like, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was. Probably doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> you getting a bite? I was. Oh. The mythical but, bite. The mythical bite, but it was a small one, I think, again. You know what's weird? I can see the fish carcasses and the chum down there, but no sharks. I mean, not a single shark swimming around right now. I mean, we know how to get the sharks to come in, too. Normally. Not today. Well, Vlad, if you're the guy, message me on my channel because uh, I want to talk with you. I've sent you a message already, so make sure you do that because I need to straighten a few things out, and I appreciate what you sent me. Um, 
Oh, look here, look here, Asa. There's wow. that one of those needlefish just right out here, or a houndfish. Here. He's got a pretty blue tail. Oh, there you go. I was gonna, I moved too quickly. I was gonna show you guys, see if you could see him, but. Um, here, let me see if I can catch him. Okay, Asa's gonna try to catch the old houndfish here. He's, he's active out there, he's working it. Oh, Mac, thank you, Mac. How, what reel is Asa using? Well, he's got a couple different ones. Um, but the one now he's using is a Shimano. A Shimano Calcutta. Calcutta, it's a bait caster. And then we use pens for the, uh, for the bigger for the spinning rods. Yeah, spinning, spinning or pens. When we come to a place like this, it's hard to bring your rods with you. And, and we've, Ace has found that the uh, collapsible rods only last so long, so many trips. So when we come, we'll usually buy some rods and um, use them for the duration and then find somebody that could use some fishing rods and, and let them have them. I usually stuff. give away to subscribers, actually. Yeah, there you go. I didn't know if you wanted me to say that or not. Uh, so I should have asked you before I started talking. Oh, kind of hard when you're live streaming. Oh, we got something else here. I'll actually put out before I leave a little message. Um, oh, Shane says, please tell your dad. I said, thank you for the prayer. Oh, you're welcome, Shane. Every day, man, every day. I uh, yeah, wish you well, my friend, and I look forward to meeting you here one of these days. So, and I can't read this stuff unless I pull my glasses up and I'm not gonna sit here and look at it like that the whole time. Isaiah gave a dollar. Thank you, Isaiah. Um, so what rod is Ace using? Well, on the, what's the collapsible one called? The collapsible one Just a second is here. an Ocean Master. Ocean My Master. Offshore Angler, that brand, Offshore Angler. Okay, Offshore Angler, Ocean Master, look it's collapsible. It. I had one of the parrotfish finally bite and he just bit through the oh, leader. Oh, shoot. Yeah, well, we kind of knew that would happen on a parrotfish. Dang it. They're so hard to fish for because they have beaks that can bite through the line, but they can see yeah. your line. So if you try to use heavy line, they won't bite. And they, they're, they're if in Hawaii anyway, I don't know what they do around here, but in Hawaii, they, they bite on the coral and on the reef. And um, you're always seeing them <laughs> swimming and they're, they're uh, pooping sand all the time. <laughs> Gear up survival, $10. He says, okay, he's got something else to say here. Hold on, let's see. Gear up survival. Pops, adopt me, drop the deadbeat, Asa. No one will blame you for dropping off the deadbeat son. <laughs> wow. 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 That's I, really cold. You know, that, that ain't going to happen, Gear up. That's colder than this drink. <laughs> That's colder than a mother in law's kiss right there. Um, wow. I, I don't know, man. Oh, there's a. Uh, school of minnows, minners, they're Your real survival little. survival probably lives in his parents' basement. Ooh, did you hear that? Europe survival probably lives in his parents' basement. That's a throwdown there. One of those like keyboard warrior types, <laughs> scraggly beard. I don't Never know, he's really got money. Anything. He's got money to give. He's just pretending. He's a pretender. <laughs> he's gonna deny the credit card charges. I worked at Taco Bell for like 15 years. Wow. Man, you guys are- Moved up. <laughs> Still just an employee. Aaron, Aaron just gave money. I'm sorry, I couldn't see it. Can I go back? Yeah, I can. Says our four-year-old says, four-year-old Kaylin says, hi from Minnesota. Well, hello, Kaylin. How do I go back to real time? Hit just, live or just, oh, here, okay, it's. Press cancel on the There button. we go, okay. Anyway, we're, uh, we're having a lot of fun out here. <laughs> It's kind of fun watching you guys comment, I gotta, I have to say. But uh, anyway, what else can we talk about here? Right, I'm gonna try to get one of those parrotfish to bite again. Okay, Ace is gonna go hard for the parrotfish. See what we can come up with. Um, and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna walk away, I'm gonna switch glasses so I can see what's going on there. Well, my friends finally get a parrotfish to bite. Well, you get one to bite and uh, you just bit right through it. Parrotfish have beaks, in case you're wondering, if you don't know much about them, which is why they call them parrotfish. They look just like a parrot. And, uh, yeah. So, there's so many of them down here, but they're, they're one of the hardest fish on the reef to catch. If it wasn't illegal, I'd say put a big treble hook on and you can catch a bunch of them. Just snag them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Man, I wish we could, yeah, well, it's just, it's almost spring, I'm getting excited. Yeah, isn't that the truth? 
Parafish will bite seaweed. Oh. Yeah, that's what they say. Ace, oh, me ancient, did you have a banana today? I actually ate a banana, but that's been hours what? ago. Well, I had you to eat it. I had to eat one. I was, that's what I had, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, bananas don't affect anything. Come to the Maldives. Oh, man, that's that's an amazing place. That Talk about a uh, dive spot. Wow. Um, anyway, COVID-19 staying away. You know, we've had COVID-19. We've had... Both the regular, the, the bad one, and then the, oh wait, Europe Survival, clean, shaved, and I have, okay. I'm enjoying this, Europe Survival. Clean, shaved, and I have a 30-day notice from my parents' basement. <laughs> you better find something, man. Anyway, uh, uh, where was I? <laughs> I told Europe Survival this morning that he was talking about his lady, and I was like, he doesn't have a lady. <laughs> He's got to do a mail order bride from a foreign country. He's never met him before. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know about pairing with somebody you've never met. I'm not real comfortable with that, but I'm kind of old, so maybe that's just me. Uh, yeah, everybody keeps saying shrimp, and we know we know that, but we couldn't get any shrimp. Um, let's see here. And I don't remember what I was talking about. Probably just as well. Try corn. Now that's an idea. Uh, where was the pond in Idaho? It was on a golf course. Uh, oh, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. So we get there. Asa finds some line in the trees and finds a hook in the trees. You know, people have gotten hung up, and he climbs out. Somehow he gets this stuff. My dad was in the Marines. Tell him Semper Fi. Um, anyway, he gets a little line set up, and the only bait we had was uh, uh, fried chicken. So he actually hooked a piece of fried chicken on. And, I mean, it was like a part of a wing or something, wasn't yeah, it? Was yeah, it was a big old, chunk, of big old chunk like a piece of wing. He caught like a two pound largemouth bass, just came over and slurped that big old uh, piece of chicken. So that's the craziest thing I've ever heard caught uh, is is a largemouth bass on fried chicken. So how's that for crazy? But um, anyway, that's, that's an Idaho story there. Can you say hi to Dylan and Emma? Please, me ancient. Hi, Dylan. Hello, Emma. Uh, good, Dylan? good, you're here. Um, Pardon me. Sure. I gotta grab this fishing rod. And check it. Maybe something. I don't know. Crab, yep. something. On, lobster. No shrimp. Look behind you, pops. Gear up, survival. <laughs> Look behind me. What? Is it behind me that way, or is it behind me this way? All right. Now you're kind of uh, wigging me out here. Gear up. Um, anyway, we are. We uh, raised our kids in Idaho. Um, we had five kids, my wife and I, and um, we still have five kids, actually. Benjamin Jacobson said, he gave $5, and he said, uh, Hello from Washington. My son Cashel and I have enjoyed bonding over your videos and have learned how to fish together. Thanks. Now, that is why Asa, one of the many reasons Asa wanted to start the channel was because of things like that. That's very cool. Good, good job, guys. Or Sebastian says, Ace, how long has it been since you had a had stag brand chili. I found some of my local grocer and it's amazing. I'm gonna send you some if you want some. <laughs> Sebastian, thanks I for the $10. Eat it in a video, he he will eat it in a video, believe me. He likes the old that chili. He does like the chili. When I was a kid, I would go fishing with a buddy of mine named Bart Taylor. He's passed away, but Bart and I would go out and the big thing was to go and and bring our Dinty Moore stew. And that was boy, that was top drawer there, Dinty Moore stew. Anyway, um, I wonder, somebody said uh, you should open an MRE. You know what? We can turn this into it because the fishing ain't into nothing <laughs> here. until a shark or something comes along. I did say hi to Dylan already. Somebody just asked if I could. Um, let's see here. Go, go to Norway. Been there. Uh, if you've seen any of my MRE videos, I've been there. In fact, uh, um, I was in. Watch this rod tip, guys new piece of bait on it let me know i was in oslo uh i went to a museum there it was pretty cool i went to a place and had pizza that's what i remember about my norway trip after we got offshore we were we had been uh, i got to see the northern lights in norway that was really cool i got my order the blue nose certificate kobe says you guys should try trout fishing on michigan or in michigan sounds like a good idea kobe swag um but uh Got to see the Northern Lights in uh, Norway. That was that was uh, that was an unreal experience. They were very active the night that I went out and laid back in the snow, 
and just watched and it was just crazy to see it see the lights unfold in front of me it was really cool so what is please answer vlad i didn't know vlad was saying more sorry guys these are going by so fast i don't see a lot of the order the brown nose no i got the blue nose arctic circle and then there's the uh a shell back that is the uh, when you go over the equator never got that and then there is the um there is the uh the ditch order the ditch that's when you go through uh the panama canal and I can't remember, I think it might be Red Nose. Gear Up Survival, open an MRE, do you have one? I have to check. Um, we went, went to Miami the other day. Oh, by the way, Miami, wow, what a store, or what a, what a place. I've never been to a, 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 in the downtown in that area of a big city like that. Um, wow, uh, impressive. I'm glad I don't um, live there because too much traffic. But wow, it was really, really something, uh, really something. So. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, boy, somebody's there from I Iowa Falls, and I don't know, they keep talking about Iowa Falls. It's a great place, I'm sure. Aloha from Oahu. Oahu. Uh, Aloha Bye, back Hawaii, at you. Folks. Mahalo for the chat. <laughs> uh, you should go to Maine for salmon fishing. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Um, I have a question. I gotta see the question now. Why? Uh, why don't you ever show your mom in your videos? Oh, that's a good question. Mama don't like to be in videos. She's never liked to be in cameras on camera as long as I've known her. And that's just the way the, the boy's mom is. Uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. That's cool. Um, Dylan and Emma. We just said hi to Dylan and Emma. Hello to you guys. Hopefully you're watching. Miss Piggy update. Mm. That's a great, uh, great thing to talk about. Miss Piggy has really uh, fluffed up for the winter time. We've, we're having a pretty good winter in, in, in the south here. And uh, she's, she's fluffed up good. She's looking fine. She's still as sassy as ever. Um, she has a particular kind of food she likes. And if you don't give that to her, she kind of gives you a toot. She, she looks at you in, in a way that you know she's not happy. And um, she also, uh, uh, is being fed by some neighbors. So thank you guys for do, taking care of that. And then green peas is another suggestion. Uh, we've had corn, green peas, and lettuce. So um, uh, do we have any more children? Yeah, I have, we have five kids all together. And we are in Florida now. Um, I am a Norwegian MRE. I, I would like that. But um, uh, Miss Piggy, she is, uh, she still is as picky as ever. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's like, uh, um, she, she acts like she wants to eat what Asa puts out there or what Ace puts out there. And then it's, it's, she just turns her nose up at us. So that's pretty classic. That's, that's Miss Piggy right there. So, um, and then sometimes though, off camera, she comes back and takes, takes a bite or two or, or horses it down. So she's just ornery. She's just, she's just ornery. That's right. Um, I got a parrotfish eyeball in my bait here. He really wants it. Can you see in there? She hates Ace's cookie. Um, uh, do you guys ever go to air shows? We have been to a couple air shows. Um, a guy said use frozen green peas. I don't know how you get them on the hook, but that was his idea. Use frozen because then the parrotfish come and bite and they can't get through it as easy. Interesting sure. concept, but... Um, what is your real name? Oh, let's see here. Yeah, these things just go go by so fast. What is Ace's full name? Don't yeah. tell him. Ace anything. Videos, <laughs> or Ace Videos Two. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I do have more. We do have more kids. Oh, watching from the Virgin Islands. Um, there's the come to Norway again. And um, have we ever caught a splake? Don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what a splake is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Did you catch anything? We caught a needle f or a, a houndfish earlier, smaller houndfish, about a foot long. Um, but um, I, somebody asked if I, anybody else joined the military. My brother, one of my brothers joined and I joined. He was in the Army, I was in the Marine Corps. And none of my kids have, Ian wanted to, but at the time we encouraged him not to. And um, um, I'm glad he listened to our advice. 
And so, no, none of the kids have gone in. Um, that's that's their deal. Let's see, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, a splake is a brook trout. Um, ever caught a cutthroat? Yeah, I think we. A splake is. Oh boy, it's going so fast I can't go back. Oh, it's a flounder. Somebody says, and then someone else said it's a, it's a brook trout. So I don't know. Go back there. Go live. Bing. There we go. Uh, come to Norway again. There you go, Orlando. Oh, ooh, there's a, there's a big one. Fourteen dollar uh, super chat. Julian Sirzal, Sirzati. Always a pleasure watching you guys together. Have a great weekend, you guys. All the best. Love from Toronto. Can't wait for the trout fishing videos to come. Wow, Julian, thank you so much. A lot of trout fishing videos this spring. There you go. A lot of trout this spring, guys. You heard it here first. Um, um, yes, I, I guess it's probably still cold up there uh, in Florida. I know it was in Iowa when I talked to my aunt last time. Um, a splake is a brook trout. And then it went past again too fast. <laughs> Um, so India, Indi Indiana, oh, okay, I just saw brook trout and something hybrid, so I didn't, what would that be, brook and Boston, Massachusetts, come to Tennessee, Indiana, Washington, UK, we have a fun channel we like to watch, I don't know what the name of it is, but a guy that grew up in the UK, and then he married a gal from America, so he talks about the differences of culture between the two countries, and that's kind of fun. Netherlands, been to the Netherlands myself, all the way up to Groningen province. You watch the channel, um, Lost in the Pond. Lost in the Pond, there you go, that's kind of a fun one. Brook and Lake Trout Hybrid is what the guy wow. just said. So, we're ever coming back to Idaho? Oh yeah, we'll be back to Idaho. Got a lot of roots in Idaho, a lot of history in Idaho. Galveston, Texas. Um, micro fishing challenge, somebody wants. Oh, Lebanon, I've been to Lebanon too. I was, uh, I was in Lebanon in 1983. Um, let's see here. There's another donation. Um, I, did, I missed it. So Wisconsin, that I, Wisconsin's a pretty place. Nepal, Hilo, Hawaii. I've never been to the Big Island. Been to Oahu and I've been to Maui. My favorite is Maui because of all the beaches and great snorkeling. But I've heard that uh, the Big Island has wonderful scuba diving and therefore probably snorkeling as well. So, um, oh, we just got another one. Let's see what that was. Go back up here. There we are. What is that one? It says, John Holtz, here from Penn Island. Love you, boys. Catch some fish. We're trying, man. I'm telling you, we're trying. So South Coast out. Fishing. Thank you. We've got three lines out. Adeline Walker, $20. Good heavens. Gear Up Survival. Subscribe to me, ancient. Golly, gear up. I, I mean, I appreciate That's it. That's I say, you must be the son of a millionaire. <laughs> Adeline Holker, have you guys ever been to Minnesota? Lots of good lakes here. Yeah, land of a thousand lakes. Uh, love your videos. It's always fun to watch them. Adeline, thank you. Um, I've been to Minnesota. I used to spend summers in Worthington, uh, southwest Florida. My mother was from there My and North Dakota and my mom and dad met in Northwest Iowa. And so uh, I'm, I was born up in Northwest Iowa and I, had, I still have uncles and aunts and cousins that live in Minnesota uh, in the Twin Cities and down in, uh, in Worthington area. So yeah, yeah, I've been there, done that. And again, this time of year, it's a little too cold for me. So uh, uh, I guess we're gonna have some kind of family reunion. We used to call them family rebellions because it seemed like it always ended in a fight, but family reunion, um, uh, for uh, uh, somewhere in Minnesota, from what I hear. Antonio, can we get a shout out? Antonio, hold on, let me go back. Antonio, can we get a shout out for Antonio and Jerry from Barstow, California? There you go, Antonio and Jerry. Thank you so much for the five dollars. And um, Asa is trying to hook up I'm some more. I'm fishing my heart out. I just had another <laughs> bite from the parrotfish. If I catch a mongo parrotfish, it's going to be really cool. Isaiah, $5. Thank you, Isaiah. He says, y'all would love y'all love y'all's videos. Come to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Love y'all's videos. Thank you so much, Isaiah. I appreciate that. Gear up survival. Asa, just <laughs> hold on. $5. Just want to punch you in my dreams. That's all. <laughs> 
I'm just, I'm not even going to repeat that one. I don't know what that means. I don't care to know. Um, Big Sky, Montana. Y'all been to Texas? Shoot, yeah. Asa did a, oh, Oslo. There you go. I'm going to Oslo next week. Uh, Asa uh, did a video from um, Texas, north of Dallas, in the lake up there. What was the name of that lake? Louisville Lake. Louisville Lake. Uh, with, um, Gerald Swindle. with Gerald Swindle. That's right. Gerald Swindle of the Bass Circuit. So if you haven't seen those on Asa's channel, um, that's where you can find him. Uh, he fished with Gerald Swindle one day for catfish. Robert Langley, thank you for the five pounds. Uh, British, uh, I guess that's British. Was when I was there. Um, and uh, and then the next day they fished for bass. So those are fun videos. That was a fun time. And that, those are ones that Toyota had sponsored for Asa, Asa's channel. Um, let's see. When are the airplane videos coming, Ace? Uh, that's... That's good. Let's see. Ace, love your vids. Keep it up. I've been watching for almost a year and a half. Greetings from Germany. Nice. Fort Campbell. That's, I think, Kentucky. My brother was stationed there in the Airborne. Uh, Missouri. Wow, there are all kinds of people from all over the place. Come to New York and fish. Go to Cabo. Ooh, that'd be fun. Come back to Texas. Fish at South Padre Island. That sounds like fun. I'm gonna go see if we have any corn up at the at the house. Here. Oh, there you go. We'll we'll let Asa head for some right corn. Back. He'll be right back. Uh, Seattle. What's my favorite fish to eat? My favorite fish right now, recently, has been now uh, uh, grouper. Ooh, fried grouper in cubes or little strips. Ooh, I love fried grouper. Um, that's a good fish. Alabama, Louisiana, and if I don't catch all your comments it's because they're going by so quickly colorado i've been fishing in colorado caught my first uh, lake trout in colorado i had a, a big spoon and the ice had just uh, a week or two earlier had just unthawed so i was casting out and i would just now i'm from the shore and the water it just drops down we had a topo map but we you know we didn't have a boat and i'd throw out and i was just i just pull that spoon up real violently and it would float on down and Ooh, I just kept doing that from shore and finally got a, I got about a two and a half pound lake trout, as I recall. Lake Louisville, fish in Maryland. Uh, what are you in Florida for? We are here for fishing to, to do videos, actually. I um, come to Mexico. I used to live in Arkansas. I met and married my wife in, in Arkansas. I was in the military, I was in the Marine Corps. Many moons ago, Kansas City, here I come. I've been through Kansas City, Ohio. I've never been to Ohio. Um, Asa has not either that I'm aware of. Vancouver, ooh, that, that's a good place out there. Um, somebody keeps sending us something about Adriandak Mountains. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri, that would be fun. Um, Matt needs some more mods in the chat. <laughs> Matt De Leon, a, t 90, a dollar. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Y'all been to Austin or Texas? I've been to, uh, I've been to, to, uh, Good grief, I've been to Dallas, Louisville, I've been to uh, Galveston, and I've been to, uh, what's the other big town, just south of Dallas. Jeez, getting old, it's kind of hard to remember things. But anyway, yeah, I've been to Texas, been driving through Texas a time or two. Um, never fished in California. I've been to Kansas myself, Ace, has, Ace hasn't. Gear Up Survival, $2. <laughs> okay, wait, I gotta see what he, what he said. Gear up survival. Prince Vegeta wants a shout out. Vegeta or Vegeta? I don't know how to say that. Prince, there you go. Cancel. There we are. Um, well, Prince uh, gave you a shout out. Um, hello from South Africa. Wow. Should do meetups with fans. He's talked about that. Um, Fort Lauderdale. We haven't tried Fort Lauderdale. We're obviously. Oh, there we go. I see you, Prince. <laughs> Semper Fi back at you. De de I, it just went by. Does somebody? Semper Fi. Um, Houston, that was it. Thank you. J Jesus James, $2. Thank you so much. I did not see. Let's just go back and take a quick look. He says, good luck from Palm Beach County. Good luck, y'all. Thank you so much. We need it today, I'll tell you. Um, um, let's just check the lines real quick. I don't see anything taking off or going crazy, so we're still good that way. Point Lookout, Maryland. Hmm. We, uh, the guy who owns this place is from Maryland. Uh, we're, we're, we're renting from. So greetings from Jamaica. Nice fish on. Yes, indeed. 
Lance, there you go. Let, come to Lake Erie. Ooh, I'd love to smallmouth fish on Lake Erie. I hear y'all have some good smallmouth on Lake Erie. Um, never been to South Africa. Nope, nope, never been over the equator. Been down to Hawaii and Lebanon is as close as I got to the equator. You want to wet your whistles? So oh, yes, thank you. All right, we got corn, and I got a little bread, too. The parrotfish are just chilling, so I just don't know. They're still down there. They're all still down there. Let's see if they'll eat corn. Why don't you guys cuss? There's no reason to. There are a lot of other good words. I, I have always thought cussing was kind of for the lazy person. Um, a lot of great words in the English language. Gear up survival, two dollars. Trash O T, what's up? Or Trish O T, what's up? They're, what? They're eating the corn. They're eating the corn, guys. Okay, they're eating the corn. Watch out. Okay. You know what okay. you should do? Tell me. Bring the unclasp the camera and show down here. Maybe okay. we can pull one up because they're going, they went okay. crazy over there. They went crazy over the corn, guys. We are going to give it a whirl. Let's see here. And I'm going to see, make sure that feels like it's in there good. So here we go. I'm going to bring it down and we'll just see. Here's what we'll do. Okay. Actually, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, just... wait, we can do it. Turn the camera okay. around and I'll do this. There we go. Now people, now you can turn around so you can see what you're looking. No, no, turn now. Oh, oh, oh I see. Oh, there, there we go. Is. Nice. Yeah, okay. See. So right, can y'all, oh yeah, you can see the fish down there. That's good. All right. They're yeah. parrot fish. They're parrot fish. some corn in. Try using frozen shrimp. Guys, we've tried, but there, uh, not, they're, they're, the we tried to get some. Yeah, none at the store. They're a lot. It's a holiday weekend, we were told, and everybody's selling out of everything. Oh my goodness, Ace, so this might be the, be, oh, did you oh see? my goodness. Oh my, oh my, look out. <laughs> they're skittish, but they're coming. Look at them. What's going on up there? This can't be real, they say. Look at them, how they, they take the other corn and they're leaving the one with, oh, he got, oh golly, that he is crazy. We'll get him. I'll drop a few more pieces in. Hey, some pops come fishing in Fort Myers. Thank you, Sheezy, for the $2. Appreciate that. Try bread. We brought He brought some bread down, too. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Isaac, we are in um, the Keys. Um, <laughs> can you ask Asa to say hi to my son, Joe? What's up, Joe? There you go. How tall are you guys? We're taller than... I'm 6'1", and my dad's 6'5". There you go. Um... Go weightless, I think. Oh man, look at that one coming. Throw the cast net on him. I like it. <laughs> That's funny. Oh golly, I gotta get up a little bit here. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to do that because it might be a while till I finally fool one. Well, you never know. There's a dollar from somebody, but it's going by so fast. Six five is huge, yeah. <laughs> don't know they stacked it that deep, did you? <laughs> How tall is Mike? He's about six foot. Mike is six foot, I'm six one, my dad's six five. Hello from California. Yeah, there's a lot of fish out there. Love the kayak fishing videos, that's good. Come to Lake Ontario. Family jam for bait is to get fruity pebbles in a bag mix, make it soft and throw it down. That's interesting. Oh man, they are crafty, aren't they, Asa? Kind of got to get a feeding frenzy going if you want to catch them, don't you? Oh, man, that's mm -hmm. as close to it as you can get, too, I would say. Mm -hmm. Can you all see those fish down there? $2, Cynthia, love from the real you Synth Corp. Please fish in New York. Well, there you go. Wow. Parrotfish, good eating. Well, here's a dirty little secret in Florida. In Hawaii, you can eat them all day long. Uh, if, you, if they reach a certain size in Florida, all you can do is catch them and release them. Uh, or you can, if they're a certain size, you can keep them for your aquarium. But I, we see not only uh, parrotfish down there, I'm seeing uh, 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 redfish, or no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm seeing um, snapper. 
I'm seeing some snapper down there. There's all kinds of fish down there. So it's not just the parrot fish. Those are the bigger ones, but I see some mangrove snapper. I see some what we call chubs, I think, down there. So there's some eating fish. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Let's see here. There's somebody from Meridian. Wow, watching from India, golly. There's someone, I don't know what language that was. That's cool. Hey, from Big Pine Key, Florida. Well, oh, we know where that pine. is. Yeah. Oh, that stingray. You guys see that stingray down where there? Where is it? Where, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you guys see him down there? Yeah, yeah. You can, they can see him. Isn't that cool? Gear Up Survival. Got to go, Ace. Hey, thanks, Gear Up. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, I appreciate it. That you, is gear cool. Up, even though I Thank don't like you. it very much. <laughs> Hope you heard that, Gear Up. Thank you. Oh, my. He's biting my bait. He bit it. And he let it go. He bit it. Gotta have him ingest it. Take it all in. That's your bread now? Uh -huh, that's a piece of bread. Hey, Luke. From Maui, there you go. What's our favorite place to go to so far? Hmm. Hey, Lincoln and Miles. Um, Saskatch Saskatchewan, that's cool. Oh, missed him. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, I like, I like Maui. I really like Maui, but I'll tell you what, I like Florida. And I really like Florida because they don't have crazy rules down here. Oh, I can see some big, um, uh, uh, what do they call those? Um, um. Snapper, mangrove snapper. I see some big ones out here. Asa. I think these would be big enough to keep if we could catch them. Yeah. They're out there a little farther. But I see those black tails, kind of like a smallmouth, it looks like, or a bass. I'm doing good. <laughs> wow, this is very cool. Smash down that bread to condense it. Oh. Yeah, I Oop. smashed the bread and put it on the, the hook, but... Somebody suggests pinfish. Yeah, I saw pinfish at the tackle store. I see some down here too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> They're staying close. Wow, well, I'm gonna bring, okay, Ace never asked to be a moderator. I charge for that, by the way, gear up survival. <laughs> Send me the bill. <laughs> We've got a lot, <laughs> we got some money from gear up survival. <laughs> you can give him back to him. Huh? <laughs> Oh my word, oh, I'm kind of old to be leaning over that, yeah. that so long. <clears throat> no, no, I didn't mean, yeah, but I was just like, <laughs> not much. You can always click that thing and turn it around if you want, but well, here come the parrot fish again. They kind of took off for a while. They, you know, well, maybe because I left, huh? Yeah, maybe. Isaac, hello to your son, Xavier. Thank you for loving all the videos and thank you for the $5. I appreciate that. Um, never driven through Saskatchewan. Took me till I was about 60 to learn how to say it. Try Oak Mountain Fishy. Oh, hello from the beautiful island of Guam. I wanted to get stationed there so badly. Hello from New Mexico, $5, Gilbert Lopez. We'd love to see you guys do some fishing over here. Best luck today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the $5. Um, I tell you, one thing about fishing, if you've seen us um, fish, we we just like to fish. I mean, uh, don't even have to necessarily, thank you for the $2, 288. Um, we just like to be out there fishing. It's just fun. Uh, we Have you said anything about what we were doing yesterday or is that just gonna be a, something later yeah, we on? Went lobster hunting yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> we went yesterday. Uh, Got some lobster videos coming up. Yeah, we uh, we actually went out and first half hour was a bust. We couldn't, we, we picked up anchor and moved to a different place. And in an hour and a half, we caught six lobster, all keepers. And we had one, uh, or we left dozens and dozens of them down there. It was so cool. It got a little late. So that was a lot of fun. The lobster hunting videos are awesome. Yes, yes. Um, when Ace, I see this all the time. When are you going to do another three-day catch and cook? Soon. <laughs> there you go. I tried to do one, and then I had to, I had 
to uh, cancel it because of, of certain things. And uh, but I'm I'm trying to do another one, guys. Um, and thank you for somebody just said they liked the uh, chowder video we just did. Ace, Ace he records my um, on my channel. He records for me, uh, and then uh, we put those out. Uh, the MRE videos. Tell Ace he's a good fisherman and you're a great dad. Well, thank you, 288. Thank you for the $2, too. Thank you. you we're, not, we're not good fishermen at the moment. <laughs> yeah, Woo. yeah. My goodness. There's what a. Of fish down here. We just can't get them to bite. Let's see here. What is my. Oh, my channel's name is Me Ancient. That's what Ace and Micah call me. Me ancient. Oh, we just got another super chat. Andrew Pe Pena, nothing better than some fun, uh, than some sun bait poles and quality time with the family. Isn't that the truth, Andrew? You got that right. Thank you for the ten dollars. That was awfully wow. kind. Was yeah. Wow. Where in Florida are you? We're in the Keys. We're in the Keys. Um, let's see here. Should take Louisiana with you to uh, take me ancient with you to Louisiana. We've talked about that. We've had to talk about you guys inspired me to start a YouTube channel. That's cool. Happy Saturday, indeed, indeed. What's the biggest shark you've ever caught, Ace? On that last live stream, it was like a four and a half foot um, nurse shark. Yes, that's right. And yes, I do have other children. I have five kids total. My wife and I have five children. But none of the other, other than Micah, the other ones do not do YouTube. Um, going to try to take my dad out fishing a bunch this summer. That is a good resolution, I have to say. Uh, I would say upper keys in answer to that question that just came up. Um, let's see here. Have y'all ever been to Arizona? We have. In fact, Ace was in a regional tournament for FLW uh, as, how old were you, Ace? A seven, Ace 17? Uh, 17, or 17 or 18. To qualify for the nationals and he didn't make that but uh, we had a great time met some really nice people down there and um, uh, yeah enjoyed ourselves good yeah fun tournament I remember we ate um, the, the thing I remember the best <laughs> is eating all you can eat fish at the restaurant right there on Lake uh, was it Lake Roosevelt um, is in the well, chain yeah, Lake Roosevelt. I think it was Lake Roosevelt yeah yeah that was a that was a fun time yeah. This restaurant, and we love that restaurant. <laughs> uh, we stayed, in fact, we stayed in cabins that had been um, built during the Depression when they were working on the dam right outside of, of uh, it's not Phoenix, it's the Phoenix metro area. It's one of those dams. Sorry, you guys didn't know if you lived there. But the, the uh, old uh, cabins that they built for the workers to live in, somebody had bought that and they were running a, uh, running a resort out of it. So that was kind of fun to have that history. I wished I'd had my metal detector with me because I would have loved to uh, look around just see if there was anything, any of the old coins from back in the 20s and 30s down there. But anyway, Ace, what do you think? Well, I'm about to give it up on these parrotfish. <sighs> hmm. Just the fishing's just, I mean, dead right now. Yeah. Just very, very crazy. Maybe it's the heat of the day or something. Yeah, something. Tide or, I don't know, just the day. Yeah. Very strange. Very, very strange. Because means he's snapping. You can see parrotfish swimming around. All that jazz. It's a gorgeous day. It's warm. There's like no reason why. I shouldn't catch them, it seems like to me, but just not a lot going on. Just not a lot. Well. Do you think of anything interesting to do or anything to try to get bites? I thought maybe trying the corn would be uh, would yeah, be something. Yeah, I mean, they, they bit they, on they it. Eat, they eat the corn. But yeah, if it, as long as it wasn't on a hook, they would eat the corn. So, huh. I don't know. What I'll do, let me just, I'm going to get on the boat there. I'm going to go grab a lobster. Oh, show the lobster? We'll show you our catch from yesterday real quick. Then we'll probably, unless a shark bites in the last, next minute here, we might, um... Uh, we can see our chum down there sitting on the bottom, folks, but we just can't get it. Uh, we just can't, we can't get the fish. Ouch. What did he poke? Yeah. Nice. There's a little lobster. Beautiful. Look at that. 
My, I bought him last night. Mm -hmm. Fixing to eat him here in a bit. Yes, we just got this boat rental, and uh, first thing we did is go out and do some. These are called lobster. spiny lobster. Look at the horns right there. That's kind of crazy. They do not have claws like a like a main lobster does, but they do have these plates that slide back and forth to kind of mandible type things that chew up the food. Of course, everybody eats the tail, uh, and but there's quite a lot of meat in the body. And Ace knows how to take these apart to get maximum meat. He's got that on another video. So anyway, there you go. That's, that's uh, supper. Sweet. Well, guys, sorry the fishing wasn't very good. It was kind of one of the risks you take, and that's fishing. It's kind of up and down all around. Thank you guys for hanging out and all the super chats and everything like that. But uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna head out. So new video coming up in just a minute. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you in the next one.